Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. Does it work? Are you ready to start? Yeah, yeah, I was ready for I know, I think when you speak, you are Okay, I'm thinking. There are people in the front row. Over purple. Thank you. That was great. <laughs> great. <laughs> right. And I arrived yesterday, actually. Even though I live in San Francisco, but I arrived from Italy yesterday. Um, thanks, Jess, for having invited me. And actually, um, very short introduction is that um, the first, I, I exchanged the first email with Jeff in 1996 when he launched a company, in, I believe, in Israel. And I wrote to the customer support and we exchanged a few emails about the product. But I never met Jeff until a few months ago. So it's uh, very interesting. Um, and two years before, 1994, I launched my first company, uh, a tech company in Venice. Uh, at the time when the company was trying to innovate fax machines, I was trying to sell actually e-commerce and website and platforms. Um, long story short, my brand in computer science, I moved to the US in 2002 and I started to um, create companies all about data. And that's also the reason why today I'm talking about data. And the last two companies, they are active and growing. One is called Pip One and Evency. Uh, I'm not going to focus specifically on the company today, but on some use cases on how our clients are uh, using the platform to, um, to go from the data they collect to selling more monetization and revenues. Uh, so put together some slides um, to tease your brain and to go through this process on, on one of the ways which you can use data today for your business. Um, so, I start with this teaser. Have you ever thought what we could do if you could read people's minds? And how, if it was possible, how this would impact for real your company? Imagine you can read what people are thinking about. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Uh, <laughs> So let's imagine for a second that we have this technology and we built it. We built a mind-reading machine. <laughs> um, uh, why? Why would we want to know what people think about? So um, people today are literally bombarded with information, with messages, with advertisement at any level, any single day, and there is too much noise from both parts, from the brands to understand what people want and what people are, from the user to understand what is the, the most interesting product or brand is worth for them to follow. And, um, and at the same time, you know, very easy, um, also there are people coming into your website every day. I know there are so many analytics too, but still sometimes you don't really know still exactly who are the people coming to you when maybe either to buy or to, you know, to check your product out. And, and you don't know that, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, so once, um, once you have a responsibility, um, after that you, you should change what you do. Once you know what people are, you should adapt 
and you should identify, understand, um, activate, and, and respond. And this is the second step. First, you collect data. And then, once you have the data, you should do something with it. Otherwise, you're sitting on a gold mine that you cannot use. Um, a very important message, even though it's maybe very, um, you know, um, constant in our mind, but we never really act on that. Um, brands and companies and products and businesses, they need to go where users are. So very often companies invest in specific channels uh, that maybe is not a channel where your users want to go, or maybe it's not where your users are. So you need to identify also the best channels, and you need to go where your users really are. And we also need to remember that uh, internal population is still expanding. So whatever you're doing today is not just you know, an extra effort to enter the, the current market and grow your market share, but between now and the next few years, we're gonna have five billion more people on the internet. So the market is huge, and whenever you're jumping on it and adapting, is still, there is still time for you to, to, to be successful. So this is maybe the most important message of practically my whole presentation. So what you need to do is you need to be relevant with your customers, with, um, to your customers. You need to understand the context, you need to understand them, and you need to tell them something that they want to hear, that they are ready to hear, and within the same context. Otherwise, they don't listen to you. And after you collect information um, from data from social media, um, then you have the possibility to send a custom message to the user. But unless you don't know them, unless you know the user, you cannot do that. So how, how this process can works, how, how it's gonna work. Um, this is just a very short video. Uh, we put together uh, about one year ago uh, to give an idea on a, a, pos a possible uh, process. You see 5,000 messages every single day, and it starts as soon as you wake up, while you're eating your breakfast, when you're driving to work, when you're surfing the web, when you're trying to enjoy your dinner, and when you sit down to relax at night. Yep, you're being bombarded with messages 24-7. But the truth is, you could care less about most of this stuff, and you're exhausted from being talked to all day. But there are those moments of joy when someone tells you about something that you really do love. The problem isn't really with advertising. The problem is you're being beat over the head with stuff you don't want or need. What if you could connect more often to the stuff you love? Well, you can, with pick one. See, you're already telling the whole world about the stuff you're into. So when the brands you love partner with Pick One, they can host engaging online polls or surveys right there on their website. It only takes a second to share your opinion, and Pick One gives you some sweet rewards just for giving some of your time. But here's the crazy cool part. You simply take a poll, and because Pick One can see all of this information, they can combine that data to provide a clearer picture of who you are and what you really want to the brands you love. Which makes it easier for all those brands to bring the awesome stuff you love right to your fingertips. Finally, advertising content that knows you and works for you. Pick One is bringing the awesome to online marketing. Find out more at Pick One. So, um, in the last two years, actually, we improved the platform, and now the clients, the companies, don't need to go through the survey process, even though it's an important, crucial part, because the survey is a way to engage with the user and to create connection. But now, um, anybody can um, start the process by importing maybe the, the email address, the list, your mailing list, and then we can already tell you um, who the user are. So here, um, we're gonna go I'm going to show you a little bit of the process. Uh, so usually, when a brand thinks about the audience, this is the image you have. It's a, a multitude of people, a mass of people, but you don't know who they are. It's pretty much grayed out. Uh, you don't know how to interact with them. It's far away. Um, and what we're able to do is to identify each single person um, and learn 
up to 500 data fields of data for each person. And we are talking about the name, the age, location, interest, the food, airlines they like to fly, and um, email, and also psychology. And this is a way, this is part of the process on how you know your customer, therefore you also know your audience at the bigger level. So our approach, and this is my suggestion um, to any business, is to go as deep as possible to learn each user. It was almost impossible 10 years ago because of technology limitations and because of data was not available. Today it is possible and going at this granular level and bringing it to the audience it gives you perspective on something that you would have never imagined before. Um, so what we like to do, we do an audience decryption or audience segmentation. Uh, that could definitely, one, the number one consequence is driving better engagement. Because if you provide to the user what he likes to hear, um, he's more bound to in interact with you. Um, this is a few screenshots on what we can do with data. Actually, if you have time later, I can even show you a real-time demo on you. Uh, and so we take a piece of information and we can explode it to um, hundreds of data fields. So we can know who the user is on any social media. We collect this information together. We give you pretty much a report of each user. And the same applies also to the audience. And up to knowing the psychology. We can read in real time all the tweets, all the Facebook posts, just by starting from an email address, because we can reverse search on the other social media. And we can even go up to your psychology and personality um, and, and use the information to know on how to serve you better. If, you, if I know you are an introvert, <coughs> as a brand, I'm going to send you a message that is more customized for you. Um, reverse you an extrovert, maybe I want to use a different message. Uh, so, to recap, this is um, the, the base of what is defined today a growth funnel. And it is a, definitely a technology, a, a strategy used in what is going today growth hacking. Growth hacking is pretty much um, digital marketing on steroids. And it uses processes at, um, at, I would say, at the funnel level to understand what, what is happening in any phase on, between the company and, and the user. So, the, um, the, the steps are pretty easy.